Hey dear, welcome back to the world of cross-dressing stories. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now, let's dive into the story. My name is Joe Warren, a rather unremarkable name for an equally unremarkable life, or so it would seem from the outside. At 40, I've spent the better part of two decades behind the safety of an accounting desk, crunching numbers that never complain or judge. I live in a small, conservative town where the pace of life is as predictable as the nine to five routine I follow religiously. But beneath the facade of this ordinary existence, I harbor a secret that brings both joy and immense solitude. Cross-dressing is my escape, my silent rebellion against a world that refuses to see beyond black and white. In the privacy of my home, away from prying eyes, I indulge in the colors and textures of a wardrobe that most would find surprising, if not shocking for a man like me. Silks and satins, carefully chosen dresses and delicate accessories. These are the pieces of myself I hide under the conservative suits I wear every day. Last night, after yet another dreary company party, I made a decision that was both thrilling and terrifying. Beneath my gray suit, I wore my finest female attire, a floral cocktail dress and matching heels, hidden but empowering. As I drove home, the familiar weight of my secret pressed heavily on me. The roads were quiet, shrouded in darkness and the occasional flicker of streetlights. My mind, usually occupied with figures and balances, wandered to a future where I could be myself openly. Lost in thought, I didn't see the sharp curve until it was almost too late. My heart raced as the car swerved, narrowly missing a collision with the guardrail. Adrenaline coursed through my veins, a harsh reminder of the fragility of life and secrets. That moment of near disaster was a stark wake-up call. Pulling over, I caught my breath, my hands trembling on the steering wheel. The close call was a mirror, harshly reflecting the dual life I led. One as Joe, the accountant, and the other as the person in the mirror at home who felt more me than Joe ever did. Each day, the divide between my public persona and my true self seemed to grow wider, the balance ever harder to maintain. As I sat there, the soft fabric of the dress against my skin beneath the stiff suit felt like a symbol of my own trapped existence. It was a life of constant caution, of overwhelming fear that discovery would lead to disdain and ridicule. Yet it was also a life punctuated by moments of genuine happiness and self-acceptance, fleeting and precious. This night, with its brush with calamity, stirred something within me. Perhaps it was time to consider a change, to contemplate a life where I didn't have to hide. Could I dare to dream of a world that embraced me as I truly am? The thought was both a beacon of hope and a terrifying gamble. As I restarted the engine and continued the drive home, the road seemed different, as if each mile were leading me not just to my house, but towards a crossroad in my life. The quiet of the night gave way to a storm of thoughts, each as chaotic as the last, about what it truly meant to live freely, authentically. The journey ahead was uncertain, but one thing was clear. The life I had been living was no longer enough. The time had come to confront the confines of my existence, to either break free or remain forever hidden behind the mask of normalcy. The morning after my narrow escape, I woke with a sense of clarity that had eluded me for years. As sunlight filtered through the curtains, casting a warm glow over the quiet order of my bedroom, I felt a resolve firming within me, an unshakable determination to no longer sideline the essence of who I truly am. The incident on the road had been a jarring reminder of life's fragility, a loud, clear call to cease living as a mere spectator in my own existence. Sitting at the edge of my bed, I allowed myself to imagine a life where I didn't have to hide behind the facade of Joe, the accountant, a life where I could be Joanna without fear. This wasn't just a daydream, it was a deep-seated desire to experience the world authentically, as my true self, even if only for a short while. The decision felt as natural as breathing. I would take a two-week vacation from work, a hiatus from my current life, and spend that time in a city known for its vibrant LGBTQ community and its embracing spirit of diversity. There, Joanna could walk the streets freely, interact with others without pretense, and I could explore a side of life that had been nothing more than whispers in the confines of my home. The planning phase was both exhilarating and nerve-wracking. Choosing the city was easy. San Francisco, with its iconic status as a haven for those like me, 
seemed like the perfect backdrop for Joanna's debut. I booked a small, discreet apartment through an online service, ensuring privacy and ease of access to the city's colorful neighborhoods. Each reservation, each ticket, each little detail added to the building excitement, a crescendo of anticipation that felt almost overwhelming. Packing for Joanna was a ritual in itself. Each item of clothing, each accessory was selected with care, embodying hopes and dreams that had long been suppressed. The soft textures and vibrant colors of the dresses contrasted sharply with the monochrome suits of my everyday life. Packing them felt like laying out the pieces of my hidden identity, each fabric whispering possibilities. As the day of departure approached, I found myself grappling with a tumult of emotions. There was fear, undoubtedly, a fear of the unknown, of rejection, and of potential dangers. But more overpoweringly, there was an immense joy, a bubbling excitement at the prospect of finally being seen, truly seen, as myself. The night before I was to leave, I couldn't sleep. I lay in bed, my mind racing with scenarios both wonderful and worrying, but overriding the whirl of thoughts was a sense of impending liberation. It felt like standing on the edge of a great precipice, not of danger, but of freedom, a place where I could shed the weight I had carried for so long and simply be. Finally, dawn broke on the day of my departure. I dressed in Joe's clothes one more time, a necessary guise to get through the airport and to my destination. With my suitcase in hand, I closed the door to my house, feeling a symbolic closing of a chapter. The journey to San Francisco was a blur, each mile taking me further from my old life and closer to a new, unexplored reality. As the plane touched down and I stepped into the bustling airport, a surge of adrenaline coursed through me. Here, on the cusp of this great city, Joanna would come alive, and Joe would, for a brief time, step back. The next two weeks promised the exploration of not just a new place, but of myself, and I was ready to embrace whatever came with open arms, an open heart, and an unmasked face. Stepping out of the taxi in front of the quaint apartment I had rented for the next two weeks, the cool San Francisco breeze greeted me like a soft whisper of welcome. It was late afternoon, and the city hummed with life, a symphony of sounds and colors that felt thrillingly foreign. Here, amidst the bustling streets and vibrant energy, I was poised to embark on the most transformative journey of my life. As soon as I entered the apartment, a wave of relief washed over me. This was my sanctuary, a place where Joe could recede, allowing Joanna to step forward fully. With trembling hands, I unpacked the items that would help me express her fully, flowing dresses, delicate scarves, and elegant shoes. Each piece felt like a fragment of a hidden puzzle of my identity clicking into place as I laid them out. The transformation began with the clothing, but it was more than just superficial. As I dressed, applying makeup with careful, practiced strokes, I felt a profound shift within. The mirror gradually revealed Joanna, not just as a reflection of my desires, but as a manifestation of my true self. She was not a mask to wear, but a part of me that was essential and real. My first venture out into the city as Joanna was to a small, cozy cafe nearby. The walk there was a flurry of nerves and excitement. With each step, I expected ridicule or disdain, but was met only with smiles and the occasional compliment. The cafe, filled with a mix of people from all walks of life, felt like a microcosm of the city itself, open, accepting, and vibrantly diverse. Over coffee, I struck up a conversation with Mia, a transgender woman who shared her own journey with a kindness and openness that was both comforting and inspiring. She introduced me to a community event happening later in the week, an invitation I eagerly accepted. This was the connection I had craved, a link to a world where diversity was not just accepted, but celebrated. The days that followed were a whirlwind of exploration and discovery. I attended art exhibitions, poetry readings, and dance performances, each event broadening my understanding of the vast spectrum of human experience. The city was a tapestry of life, woven from threads of different colors, patterns, and textures, and I was a part of it, as Joanna. With each outing, the initial anxiety that accompanied stepping out as Joanna lessened, replaced by a burgeoning confidence. I was not just accepted here, I was embraced. People I met were interested in my story, in who Joanna was, and in what she had to say. It was a profound validation of my identity, something Joe had never fully experienced. 
This newfound freedom was exhilarating, but it also sowed seeds of contemplation within me. The joy of being Joanna in this open, accepting environment made me question the possibility of confining her existence to just two weeks. Could there be a life where Joanna was not just an occasional expression, but a permanent, celebrated reality? Each night, as I returned to my apartment, the walls seemed to echo with the laughter and conversations of the day, with the affirmations and acceptance I had encountered. Lying in bed, I found myself caught between elation and a poignant yearning. The life I had built as Joe, with all its safety and predictability, felt increasingly like a shell, one that was becoming too constricting, too colorless. San Francisco, with its embrace of all shades of humanity, offered a glimpse of a different existence, one where the lines between Joe and Joanna didn't have to be so starkly drawn. The city not only opened its arms to Joanna, it opened my eyes to the potential of a life lived fully, vividly, and true to oneself. As the end of my two-week escape approached, the thought of reverting completely to Joe became almost unbearable. This journey was no longer just an escape. It was a revelation, a beacon pointing towards a horizon filled with the colors of possibility. The evening air was crisp as I walked towards the local theater, the vibrant lights and the buzz of the crowd drawing me in like a moth to a flame. It was the final night of a renowned avant-garde production, and the excitement was palpable. Dressed in a flowing maroon dress, paired with a delicate pearl necklace, I felt a surge of confidence with each step. This night, like many over the past week, was a celebration of Joanna, and I reveled in the freedom it brought. As I settled into my seat, the curtain rose, revealing a world of drama and color that resonated deeply with my own transformation. The production was a mesmerizing blend of contemporary dance and classic theater, a perfect mirror to the diverse and complex identities I had come to know in this city. During the intermission, I ventured to the lobby where the thrum of animated discussions filled the air. It was there that I met Sam. He was leaning against the bar, a sketchbook in hand, his eyes alight with creativity and passion. His style was eclectic, a mix of vintage and modern that was both striking and seamless. Love your dress, he said, his voice warm and inviting. It has a timeless elegance, a perfect choice for tonight. I thanked him, feeling a blush of pride. We quickly delved into a conversation about fashion, discussing our favorite designers and the transformative power of a well-tailored outfit. Sam, it turned out, was a costume designer for the theater, his life as intertwined with fabric and thread as it was with stories and stages. As we talked, I found myself drawn to his enthusiasm and his open, easy manner. There was an immediate kinship, a sense that here was someone who understood the profound impact of expressing one's identity through art and attire. Would you like a backstage tour? Sam offered, his eyes twinkling with the promise of shared secrets. There's a whole other world behind the scenes, full of chaos and beauty. I accepted eagerly, thrilled at the opportunity to see the heart of the theater. As we walked through the bustling backstage area, Sam introduced me to various crew members and actors, each person greeting me with smiles and nods of appreciation. It was a community knit tightly by the threads of creativity and mutual respect, a community where I felt an instant sense of belonging. Sam showed me the costume workshop, a riot of colors and materials. He shared stories behind each costume, the inspirations and challenges, his hands moving animatedly as he spoke. His passion for his craft was infectious, and I felt a deep admiration for his ability to bring stories to life through his designs. As the night progressed, Sam included me in discussions with other theater enthusiasts. Each introduction felt like a door opening to a new world. These were people who thrived on authenticity and artistry, who celebrated diversity in all its forms. The connection was exhilarating, filling me with a sense of community and acceptance that Joe had never experienced. Sam's interest in me as Joanna was affirming. He saw me not just for the persona I presented, but for the person I was beneath. Our conversation flowed effortlessly, spanning topics from the superficial to the deeply personal. I shared my journey of self-discovery, and Sam listened with an earnestness that made me feel truly seen. As the evening ended and we said our goodbyes, Sam handed me his card. Let's keep in touch, Joanna. There's so much more to share, and I'd love to hear more about your story. 
Walking back to my apartment, under the starlit sky, I felt a profound connection not only to Sam, but to the broader community I had met. The unexpected encounter had deepened my resolve to explore this new life further. Sam had opened a window to a world where Joanna could not only exist but thrive. The possibility of living as Joanna permanently, which had once seemed a distant dream, now felt tantalizingly within reach. In the weeks following the theater production, my connection with Sam deepened into a friendship that was vibrant and enriching. We spent countless hours exploring art galleries, attending fashion shows, and sharing meals at quaint cafes that became our favorite haunts. Each moment was a thread in the tapestry of a new life I was weaving as Joanna. Sam's presence in my life was like a beacon, illuminating the possibilities of what could be. He was both a muse and a confidant, his keen sense of understanding and his zest for life encouraging me to embrace my identity more fully than ever before. Yet, as our bond grew, so too did the complexity of my situation. One crisp evening as we walked along the pier, watching the sun dip below the horizon, Sam's conversation took a turn towards the personal. Joanna, he began, his tone more serious than usual, I feel like there's a part of you that you keep hidden. It's like there's a story behind the story, and I can't quite read it. You know you can trust me, right? His words meant to bridge the gap between us instead felt like a wall suddenly looming. Panic fluttered in my chest. I had grown to care deeply for Sam and the thought of losing him should my full truth come to light was terrifying. I masked my fear with a smile and a nod, but inside I was reeling. I appreciate that Sam, really, I replied, my voice steady despite the turmoil within. Maybe there's a bit more to share in time. I hoped my vague response would satisfy his curiosity for the moment, buying me time to figure out a path forward without deceit. Meanwhile, back in my hometown, the life I had temporarily left behind was unraveling. A colleague at my accounting firm, driven by suspicions and the noticeable change in my demeanor before my departure, had started to piece together clues of my double life. I had been careful, or so I thought. But the odd days off, my evasive answers about vacation plans and a found receipt for a dress had sparked a misguided investigation into my personal life. The colleague, believing he was uncovering a scandal that could jeopardize the firm's reputation, began digging through my emails and questioning other co-workers about my absences. The risk to my career, built over painstaking years, was now palpable. The thought of returning to a professional life marred by scandal and misunderstanding was suffocating. Each call from home, usually mundane and routine, now carried an undercurrent of dread. I was torn between the liberation I felt in San Francisco and the potential destruction of the life I had known. The contrast between my worlds was stark, and the pressure to reconcile them grew with each passing day. As Joanna, I had found a community and a possible future filled with acceptance and authenticity. But Joe's world was not ready for such revelations, and the bridge between my two identities seemed increasingly fragile. One evening, as Sam and I sat in his cozy living room, surrounded by sketches and fabric swatches, he gently took my hand. Whatever it is you're holding back, Joanna, know that you don't have to go through it alone, he said earnestly. His eyes, filled with genuine concern and affection, made my heart ache with the weight of my secret. The fear of losing everything was overwhelming. My career, my relationship with Sam, and perhaps most painfully, the newfound expression of my true self. The challenge was no longer just about acceptance by others. It was about the courage to be wholly authentic, regardless of the consequences. This internal struggle, this balancing act between Joe and Joanna, had reached a critical point, and the path I chose next would define the rest of my life. The annual community gala, a vibrant celebration of diversity and unity, was the perfect backdrop for what would become a pivotal moment in my life. The event, held in a grand hall, decked with colorful banners and lights, buzzed with the energy of a community coming together to celebrate its many faces and stories. As Joanna, I had never felt more connected to the people around me, yet the weight of my secret pressed heavily on my heart. Sam and I arrived together, both of us dressed in our best. He wore a sharply tailored suit that complemented his artistic flair, while I chose a long flowing gown that reflected my newfound boldness. The evening was filled with music, laughter, and dancing, but beneath the surface, 
there was a tension between us that had been building for weeks. As the night progressed, I could sense Sam's growing frustration with my evasiveness. His usual cheer was tempered by a quiet seriousness, and I knew the moment of reckoning could no longer be delayed. Finally, as a slow song filled the room and couples gathered on the dance floor, Sam led me to a quiet balcony overlooking the city lights. Joanna, he began, his voice soft but firm, I know there's something you're not telling me. This secrecy, it's creating a distance between us. I care about you more than I've cared about anyone in a long time. I just wish you'd trust me enough to let me in. The sincerity in his eyes and the vulnerability in his voice shattered the last of my defenses. The fear of rejection, of losing this person who had come to mean so much to me, was overwhelming, but so was the need to be honest, to be truly seen. Taking a deep breath, I let the truth spill out. Sam, there's something important I need to tell you about myself. My name is Joe, Joe Warren, Joanna. She's a part of me, a very real and important part, but I was born and have lived most of my life as a man named Joe. I'm an accountant from a small conservative town, and coming here, being Joanna, it was supposed to be just a break from a life where I felt I couldn't be myself. The confession hung in the air between us, heavy and fraught with potential fallout. I watched Sam closely, bracing for any sign of withdrawal or judgment. Sam was silent for a long moment, processing the revelation. His eyes searched mine, perhaps looking for the friend he thought he knew or reassessing the person standing before him now. Joe, he finally said, his voice thick with emotion, thank you for telling me. I won't pretend this isn't a lot to take in, but I want you to know that my feelings, they aren't just about Joanna or Joe. They're about the person you are, the one I've gotten to know and care about deeply. The relief was immediate and profound. Tears welled up in my eyes as the fear of rejection I had carried began to dissolve, replaced by a deep gratitude for the acceptance and understanding Sam offered. But what does this mean for you? He continued gently. What are you going to do when you go back home? His question was one I had wrestled with every day. I don't know, Sam. I'm scared of losing everything. But being here, being Joanna, it's shown me who I can be, and I don't know if I can ever fully go back to just being Joe. Sam took my hands in his, his touch warm and reassuring. Whatever you decide, you won't have to face it alone. I'm here for you, Joe, Joanna, whoever you choose to be. Let's figure this out together. On that balcony, with the city sprawling beneath us and the gentle music floating up from the gala, a new chapter of my life began, one filled with possibilities, challenges, but most importantly, a chance to live authentically, embraced by someone who saw and accepted every part of me. In the weeks following my revelation to Sam, the support and acceptance I found within the community were nothing short of transformative. It wasn't just Sam's understanding that bolstered my courage, it was the collective embrace of all those who had come to know Joanna, and now Joe, without reservation. This network of friends and allies became my anchor, providing the strength I needed to make the most significant decision of my life. Resolved to no longer divide my identity between Joe and Joanna, I began the process of transitioning into living as Joanna full-time. The city, once a place of escape, was now my home, a sanctuary where I could be unequivocally myself. The decision to move permanently was both exhilarating and daunting, but the promise of authenticity outweighed the fears of the unknown. With a heavy heart but a hopeful spirit, I returned to my hometown to confront my past. It was essential to me that I come out to my family and friends to share my truth with them as I had with Sam. The conversations were deeply emotional, filled with moments of confusion and concern, but also love and an earnest desire to understand. My parents, though initially shocked, expressed their unwavering support, their affection transcending any barriers of conventional norms. Friends, too, adjusted to the new reality, some with ease and others with hesitation, but most came around, touched by my honesty and vulnerability. Leaving my old job was another step in shedding the remnants of a life that no longer fit. I reached out to contacts I had made in the city, and soon opportunities began to arise, ones that allowed Joanna to thrive not only personally, but professionally. 
I accepted a position at a firm that celebrated diversity, where my background as an accountant and my unique journey were seen as assets rather than liabilities. Sam and I continued to grow closer, our relationship a testament to the power of acceptance and love. He was by my side as I navigated my new life, a steadfast partner in every sense. Together, we attended rallies and events, advocating for cross-dressing and transgender rights, driven by a shared commitment to change and a desire to support others in their journeys towards acceptance. As Joanna, I found not just peace, but a profound sense of fulfillment. The freedom to express my true self without fear transformed every aspect of my life, infusing it with a vibrancy I had never known. The city, with its pulsating energy and mosaic of cultures, reflected my own transformation a blend of resilience and renewal. Looking back at the journey from the concealed pain to the triumphant emergence of my true self, I was overwhelmed with gratitude. Life as Joanna was not without its challenges, but each obstacle was a stepping stone towards a fuller, richer existence. The support of the community, the love of my family, and the partnership with Sam were my pillars, supporting a life built on the foundation of authenticity. Standing on my apartment balcony, Overlooking the bustling streets below, I felt a deep connection to the world around me, a world that had once seemed so distant. Now it was mine to embrace and contribute to, a canvas on which to paint my story of transformation and acceptance. This was not just a new chapter, but a whole new volume of a life lived boldly and truly, a testament to the beauty of being oneself, wholly and unapologetically.